Hey everyone, this is Zan. Today we'll be talking about Winds of Death. There were a lot of questions in my Need of Anger video about how to effectively use this spell. So I'll do my best to explain it here, but please be aware that this is going to be a pretty advanced explanation. So Winds of Death itself is a air death spell, or mostly death, that costs a gem, but what it's going to do is it's going to trigger a magic resistance check against seven, and then whoever fails that roll is going to start decaying. Without getting into too much detail, let's just say that units take damage over time as they decay. Now, the biggest confusion came because this spell affects the entire battlefield, including your whole army, and that can be difficult to use safely. So we will not be doing any of that. We will not include this spell with our army. The most bare bones way is to send a lone mage, who is at least death 3 and air 1, to cast a spell on their own. With nothing else included, they'll likely die in the process. You'll also need to predict enemy movement, and therefore they can miss their intended target, and you really don't want that. So let's talk about how I normally use the spell. I solve the movement prediction through magical movement which is normally Cloud Trapeze or Teleport, either in Air Magic or Astral Magic. And it, this is important because Magical Movement finalizes and triggers battles before regular movement. So I don't have to predict anything. Then I'm going to equip a Ring of Returning on my mages. That way, as soon as they take any damage, they get sent back to their home, which is usually the province they get recruited in. And finally, since the spell already requires air magic, I like to cast Misform as the first spell in the script. Although it's going to delay the Winds of Death and give your opponent some potential counters, Misform is going to reduce the damage taken by 25 to a minimum of 1, meaning that it's likely taking damage is likely going to be non-lethal, but it will still trigger the Ring of Returning. So it's not a guarantee of safety but it's pretty damn good. And then finally, if possible, not every nation has access to this, all of this toolkits and spells, I'll try to equip my mage with items that are going to increase their magical penetration, like a Rune Smasher or an Eye of the Void. There's a few other items here and there, including, I think, the Shaman Staff, which is a nature astral that was added recently. And those can all be good. And on the topic of items, it's OK if boosters are needed to reach some of the spell thresholds. So maybe you don't have enough death magic to cast Winds of Death, so you can hold the Skull Staff. Or you don't have enough astral magic to move in the magic phase, you can put on a Starshine Skull Cap to increase your, magic, your astral magic. That's OK, too. Just do know that this is starting to get pretty expensive, and it can be. And before we actually get to the fun part where I show a bunch of these mages casting Winds of Death on pre-built AI armies, let's talk about anti-magic. So anti-magic is the traditional counter to Winds of Death. It gives you more magic resistance, four more actually, and that makes it significantly less likely that you'll be affected by Winds of Death. It's worth noting that the casting time on anti-magic is just a little bit faster than Winds of Death. It's not guaranteed to go before it, but more than likely it will. It's also worth noting, too, that Anti-Magic is a little bit harder to cast in Dominion 6. Now it is Astral 3 and requires two pearls, which means you need to be at least an Astral 3 mage to use it or cast Power of the Spheres beforehand. Finally, let's uh, roll this turn and finally look at what happens to the armies being affected by Winds of Death. The battle should be quick because most of my mages are going to have these rings returning. So let's start with Annika. So TNG and Annika, I am sending one of my Pro Clan Scythe Renders with penetration gear. So this is on the ballpark of how strong the Winds of Death would be. And they're going to fight just basic humans. And I also want to include Cavalry just to see how the recent changes to mounts is going to affect this. This is going to be pretty cool overall, because the mounts have very low magic resistance and often will damage the rider if the mount dies. The riders themselves 
also don't have really great magic resistance. So we'll just speed this up a little bit. Okay, he has cast Misform, so he should now be somewhat safe from dying. And he'll proceed to cast Anti Magic, or Winds of Death, sorry. Now, do note that in most of these examples, I really have the armies unscripted, except where I'm casting Anti Magic. A lot of player battles tend to have holds and attack early on, which means you might get more than one Winds of Death cast, cast off. In this case, his encumbrance is 76, but he's about to get hit by all these cavalry. So in the case that these were on hold and attack, he would get a second Winds of Death off. But right now, we can kind of see most of them have been affected with the Decay right here. And here's the magic resistance check. So with all of this new penetration gear, the roll is 11 instead of 7, and was able to enforcement. So what's going to happen? Well, let's come back on. The horsemen complete their charge for one damage. And most of them decay to death. Sometimes it's the rider, sometimes it's the horse, sometimes often it's both. And let's see how these riders, you see now they've taken damage, even though they didn't decay, it's because their mount died and they fell off. So it looks like this is some variable amount of damage. We can actually check through the logs here. Yeah, uh, looks like it's usually a uh, one to two damage, so that doesn't seem awful. Oh, this one took four damage, so maybe it's an open ended dice roll. Who knows? But this is going to be really strong against cavalry in general, cavalry nations, because all of although a lot of these little human riders here survived, they're mostly going to get sent home to remount, if I understand Dominions correctly. Yeah, and as you see, most of them, there were more survivors than are shown here, but since they lost their mount, they had to go remount in the capital province. So cavalry in the late game are really going to fear this spell. Moving on to Asepni, we have, I believe, a little bit more cavalry, but now we have a mage casting anti-magic. So now the magic resistance of the riders has gone from 10 to 14, and the mounts from Five to nine. Normally, that might be enough to survive Winds of Death. I don't think I have penetration gear here either. I do not. So we'll fast forward again, cast the spell, and we'll notice that a lot less. Oh, hard to notice, but a lot less were affected, as you see, a lot more of the what are these Imperial horsemen actually remained on their mount. So that's pretty good considering. Obviously, some have lost their mounts and they're going to go home. Some have died. Some mounts have lost their riders. Still kind of hurts, but the effect was better. Here we lost 13 and sent 15 home. Here we lost 28 and sent 16 home, completely destroying this army. And I think we can skip over this one. This is just the results of not using penetration gear, but also not having anti-magic. And we still devastated the army. They killed 18 and 22 were sent home. So even without the penetration gear, this was still very strong against this army. Now we have a few other use cases. So here in Vongar, I believe we have penetration gear against Bandar warriors. So I did want to note Bandar warriors just because they do have less magic resistance. And some nations out there have units like this that have really good strat stats. They're very strong, but then their magic resistance is eight or seven. And it maybe if you have high magic scales, their magic resistance is even lower. And in this case, they're actually kind of slow. So what might happen is we might see multiple Winds of Death cats. And that's definitely not what this nation wants to see. There's the first one, and everyone is already afflicted. And will we see a second one? There's the second one. And now everybody is afflicted. I do like that it also kills the bushes, in case someone's trying to animate bushes at you. And as we see, yeah, they don't even get, they don't even make it. They die crawling to the mage. So pretty devastating. I think here in Dathan, we now have no penetration gear, but we do have a debug sensei. Why not? Oh, we do not. So this is also just going to be no penetration gear. But since they're so slow, 
yeah, they're mostly going to be afflicted. It's pretty bad. We have our total wipe up here, a partial wipe up here, and over here is where we actually have anti-magic being cast, right? Yes. But now their magic resistance goes up to 12. Still not good by any means. They could definitely use more, but it's better than 8. And the results speak for themselves. Only losing 9. And this is probably one of the more susceptible units out there. I mean, they have a little bit more hit points, so they might survive, even if they're afflicted, but odds are not in their favor. Finally, when we we'll go to Giants, we'll just kind of skip through these real quick. We'll notice that it's not really having an effect on them. So Giants in general are going to have higher magic resistance. Not always. But also, they just have a lot of hit points. So we'll just look at one of these real quick. So do we have Penetration Gear here? Yeah, we do have Penetration Gear here. So we are afflicting them. We're afflicting a lot of them. Oh, it looks like he got hit by an arrow. But... They just have so much hit points that it's kind of okay. And then they have a high max age, so they're not really going to feel the pain from this one. Not unless it happens multiple times. You know, that happened now in one, in one province, happens again in the next one. And finally, we have magical creatures. And I have a few versions of this. The first traditional one is... So when I say magical creatures, I mean something like centaurs that have innately high. This has 13 magic resistance without anti-magic. Compare that to the Bandor. <laughs> uh, but they do tend to have you know, more regular hit points compared to the Giants. So they'll be less afflicted, but those that are afflicted may die. Sometimes they'll survive, but not always. There we go. 23 losses. But also, I think here in Mushwood is one of the other traditional counters to this. And you'll see this very quickly. So as he's casting Misform, as he's casting Winds of Death. I think this is the right province. Yes. Something will come down, like a harpy, and hit him for one damage because it is a scraggly old mage. And that's it. Nothing happened here. Why? Because there were just a handful of bird women on attack, and they were able to stop him. So Pan gets these kind of in their province defense normally, but most nations can find some way to get a disposable flyer just to prevent this kind of shenanigans. So hopefully these showcases are stressing that the spell itself can be matchup dependent, being very strong versus animals or humans, especially knights, but not too great against magical creatures or giants. Regardless, you might still find yourself trying to use the spell, even if it's not efficient, because once you get past the expensive setup, it's relatively cheap for the potential damage that it can cause. It can be repeated very often, and it kind of forces your opponent to have an answer. I hope that they have a way to cast anti-magic or have some disposable flyers or just have something to disrupt their script is what you're doing. Now, one of the other things that's not even mentioned here because this is a whole other ball game, but if their army has a script that's going to use a bunch of other gems, summoning fire elementals or turning your army's skin into iron. All of that might get used just because you showed up to cast Winds of Death. So it's going to run up a lot of gem cost to the defending player. And that can probably be taxing on the player's economy, maybe even taxing on the player themselves, as now they have to set up some sort of logistical management to always have gems on hand or extra gems. Who knows? Anyways. I hope this video helped everyone understand Winds of Death a little bit better. It can be a pretty strong tool in a nation's kit to have, and I would have felt wrong not mentioning it uh, being part of Nidavonger's kit with the Scythe Renders, these fantastic mages. So thank you for everyone who specifically asked about the spell. A lot of questions came up, so I felt that I should probably make a video on it. It's easier to show it than tell, right? I mean, this is YouTube. So this was kind of fun to set up, but I have to go back to making some more of these at a glance videos because, yeah, it seems you guys like them very much, and they're pretty fun to make and talk about all these random nations. I'm going to start going over some older nations quickly. I think this week I'm going to try to do Middle Age Pachaka, and I might do a stream before I do 
millh uh, paren. And I'm not sure when I will get back to doing early age paren or Wolfsbeheim, just because, again, I am not the most familiar with early age, and I don't want to misspeak on them. I don't want to give you guys bad advice, you know? So I'm going to get back to work, and I hope to see you guys again next time.